to the camera. This is the South Coast Correctional Centre in Nowra, New South Wales. For many of the 600 inmates inside, the path to prison began with acts of aggression. Get on the ground! You touch me! Indeed, it's estimated that each year, three in every 100 Australians over 15 years old are physically assaulted. Thank you, step down. But could the level of violence in society be reduced by something as simple as eating more fish? That may sound fanciful, but researchers from the University of Wollongong have been granted rare access to explore the link. Associate Professor Barbara Meyer leads the research. What are, you, what are you doing in this environment here? Well, we're actually doing a pilot feasibility study looking at the effect of fish oils and multivitamins and minerals on aggressive behaviour. So why are you doing it in a prison? Well, we're repeating a study that was done in the UK and also in the Netherlands because what they found was that fish oil and multivitamin and minerals reduced the number and severity of reprimands by up to 35%. You know, we have a duty of care towards the people who we manage in custody and if there was a protocol that could have a positive impact on people's behaviour, reducing the level of institutional violence, um, then it would be immediately attractive to us. OK. The first question here, the green one, let's just go through that first. My friends say that I argue a lot. Now, you've got a choice to 136 say... 136 inmates allowed the scientists to access their history of reprimands in prison. The inmates also completed psychological questionnaires relating to their levels of aggression and attention deficit disorder. One of the things that the science has been telling us is that people with attention deficit problems have uh, an issue with impulsivity and not thinking through their actions. They may act aggressively because they haven't had time to think of alternatives and different ways of managing complex situations. And in a world first, the team also took blood samples from the inmates to measure their level of omega-3 fish oils. And whatever the levels of that are in the blood, that will give you a clue as to about what the levels might be in the brain? That's correct, yes. Uh, and unfortunately, or fortunately, we can't take brain samples. So they won't let you do that? No, no, they won't. So we do have to take blood samples. From autopsy results, it's shown that the brain levels do correlate well with what's in the blood. The first thing analysed were the baseline results, which compared the blood samples to the psychological tests conducted at the start of the study. The results are fantastic because we do see a correlation. So the lower the level of omega-3s in the bloods, then the higher the levels of aggression and the higher the levels of attention deficit disorder. One of the strongest correlations was in relation to the management of emotions and frustration. What we see over here is that those people who had real difficulty in managing their emotions uh, and in dealing with frustration had the lowest levels of baseline omega-3. And it's entirely consistent with research from other fields that talk about the management of depression and the management of anxiety through the supplementation of omega-3. This suggests that if you were to supplement those and bring them up to normal levels or optimal levels, then you could potentially reduce the levels of aggression and uh, attention deficit disorder. That's quite a remarkable result, isn't it? Yes, I know, we were flabbergasted to actually find that, but that's what we found. So what could explain this correlation between lack of fish oils and aggression? Well, fish oils contain the omega-3 fatty acids known as DHA and EPA, which are essential for optimal brain function. Indeed, DHA is the most abundant fatty acid in the brain, with high concentrations in areas critical to communication between neurons. But the human body can't manufacture enough of these fatty acids. so we need to feed our brain through our diet. The original source isn't actually fish. It's marine microalgae and seaweed. These travel up the food chain and become highly concentrated in oily cold water fish like salmon, mackerel and tuna. The omega-3 helps their cell membranes to function at cold temperatures and the benefits get passed on to us. Our brains require a high level of function and fluidity, if you like. That's indeed why we think there's more omega-3 of the DHA and EPA types in our brain cell membranes compared to some of the other cell membranes in our body. As a result, it's thought that omega-3 fatty acids 
reduce aggression by increasing planning, attention and organisational skills while restraining impulsiveness. One inmate said, oh, I don't think I can do the fish oil supplementation. And my master's student, David, said, well, why? He said, oh, I don't want to lose my ability to fight. And David said, well, you won't lose your ability to fight, but it'll lengthen your fuse. Yeah. So it gives them the opportunity to think before they act. And I think that's where omega-3s fit in. While it's recommended we consume between 500 milligrams and one gram of omega-3 per day for cardiovascular health, there's no figure for optimal brain health. But when our brains don't get enough omega-3, the void is filled by the more rigid omega-6 fatty acids. Most dietary omega-6 is found in the vegetable oils that flood our modern Western diets. They're not as effective as the ones in fish oil and that can affect our cognition and our behaviour. The researchers also wanted to measure change in behaviour over a four-month period. So half the inmates were given one gram of omega-3 and multivitamins per day, while the other half were given a placebo with the vitamins. I think I'm on the real thing, yeah. Well, it's, hard, it's hard to tell because I've quit smoking six months ago, so... But I've, I've noticed some, I'll, get, I'll get a lot more energy lately, yeah. This part of the study was a trial run for a proposed larger multi-centre study with more inmates and therefore more statistical power. So Jason, what do you think of the idea that fish oil might affect your behaviour? Um, yeah, I reckon it's, it's working in some ways. Like, because I do literacy classes here, so I notice that I concentrate, like I want to concentrate a bit more and focus more in the work and not worrying about what's outside or what's going on. I think I've calmed down a lot over the last few months, yeah. yeah I've, I've calmed down. I was getting a bit angry when I quit the cigarettes, but for a while. <laughs> Unfortunately, the statistical power of this study largely evaporated as they lost 45% of participants before the end of the trial. And that was due to either moving to a different correctional centre or they were paroled or um, they didn't want to be part in the study. <laughs> I mean, you think that a prison, they're kept there, but no, there's a lot of movement within a prison. But the researchers did gain valuable insight into some unique challenges they'll need to overcome in the larger study. So, Jason, do you think you know what you were on? I think I was on the active. OK, why do you think you were on the active? Because we actually tested it when we cut one open to smell if it was... And you yeah. think the smell... Yeah. OK, <laughs> do you think you felt any different or anything? Yeah, yeah, that too, yeah, yeah? definitely. The prison system is a unique culture. Every item that you have is an item for barter. So there were people who were exchanging their tablets or giving their tablets away for other gains or were being asked for them under sufferance because it's generally known that omega-3s would help them with their physical exercise routine. The first positive outcome, I suppose, is that we can actually do this type of work in a prison. So we'd be most interested in actually advancing this and seeing this research completed so we could get some better insight into whether or not we need to change the diet of prisoners to affect their behaviour. There's evidence to suggest that it works, but we need to do more research to actually show cause and effect. Eat. <laughs>